Here we go, folks. Well, it happened yesterday. Julio Jones is officially a Tennessee Titan. That was kind of our second tier choice. We had the Rams going number one because we heard that strong arm. That strong arm. Matt Stafford. That strong arm right there. And then we saw, you know, the odds starting at plus 6,600 for the tight for the Rams to acquire Julio Jones. And then it kind of jumped to plus 600. So we were like, does Vegas know something we don't? And we kind of jumped on that train at the end of the Julio Jones saga. But they ends up going to the Tennessee Titans. And now we have the official compensation here. And it's literally nothing. Nothing. So... The Falcons, they don't get that first round pick that they were truly after. Uh, he ends up, they ended up getting just a second round in the 2022 draft. So this year's draft coming up. And then next year's draft, they get a fourth round pick as well. So not the compensation that they were truly looking for, but they just really, really wanted to free up that $15 million in cap space. And uh, the Titans were the only ones that were really willing to take on that contract so the Titans they give up a second round a fourth round that's nothing I would give that up for Julio Jones as well proven talent on the field folks you have to get that especially if it's not a top 10 pick any draft pick outside of the top 10 is honestly not that great and I'm always going to take proven on field talent over you know a potential bust so the Falcons didn't get really anything there. And, uh, you know, the Titans didn't have to give up anything. So the Titans, they get Julio Jones. And they also get a six-round pick in the 2023 draft. So not uh, it's something. I don't think it's it's not going to be great. But you never know. It's a, it's a shot. It's a shot to get something. So um, both teams kind of made out. Falcons lost that contract. Um, got... Uh, uh, I, can we even call these decent picks? Can I call a, a fourth round pick in the 2023 draft? Can I even call that a decent pick? I don't think so. I, I guess the second round is all right, but we know he's aging out of this league a little bit. 33, the hamstring injury. So, uh, you know, we'll see how the Titans use them. Obviously, you know, you losing Corey Davis, that 6'3 wide receiver, replacing it with Julio Jones, 6'4. Hopefully, he can kind of stay healthy. He's going to be used a lot. Ryan Tannehill is going to fall in love with Julio Jones, folks. I mean, when you got this great talent, Ryan, Fitz, um, Ryan Tannehill has never played with like an A1 tier one wide receiver. AJ Brown has really been kind of emerging in this league he's only two years in Corey Davis always kind of solid at 6-3 but no true superstar sure ballot hall of famer that uh, Ryan Tannehill was working with so maybe we get to see a jump in Ryan Tannehill's abilities and talents how great would that be because we know he's right there you know he's above average folks I put him in kind of you know tier two quarterback status Ryan Tannehill so we'll see if he can kind of reach tier one with a tier one wide receiver on the team so a nice kind of great offense here offensively, uh, a great offense uh, for this Titans team, and we'll see how they rock with Julio Jones. So now we know where he is. Now we know the compensation. So we can kind of start talking about, you know, everything that led up to this, and let's start breaking everything down. So what's what do we got next? Alrighty, so we heard Julio Jones. Well, let's say this because so is this a good fit for Julio Jones? Would did Julio Jones want to go to the Titans? Because that was something that we were kind of keeping track of. If Arthur Blank for the Falcons were just gonna kind of you know throw him aside, um, you know throw Julio Jones aside and be like, you know, we really don't care where you want to go. We're gonna make the best decision right for us. And we kind of heard that Julio Jones wanted to go to a playoff contender, a Super Bowl contender, and a quarterback with the big arm now the titans are definitely super or playoff contenders it's going to be tough to still be super bowl contenders especially in this kind of stacked afc i mean we've got the colts we've got the ravens we've got the chiefs we've got the titans we've got the bills i mean that's five great teams in the afc so it's still going to be hard for this titans team to come out of the afc but they can still be competitive like they have been these last two seasons so is this kind of a destination that kind of fulfilled what Julio Jones wants while also got getting what the Falcons wanted as well? Trying to get that first. Didn't seem like anybody was kind of takers on that. Um, and so they had to settle for that second round. So I really think Arthur Blank kind of did Julio Jones justice here. We're, we got you to the team that's playoff contenders. Ryan Tannehill. We're going to go to the story next. And, you know, Ryan Tannehill's got a pretty good arm. He, uh, you know, he kind of gets, you know, bashed because of those kind of Miami years 
years with Adam Gase, but ever since he's been a Titan, he's really been getting it done. Solid work out there, solid completion percentage, yards are there, 3,800 yards last season, 65% completion percentage, barely turns the ball over, doesn't have those double-digit interceptions here in Tennessee, so, I mean, yeah, this is a solid quarterback here, and now we get this kind of breakdown <clears throat> from PFF, accuracy percentage on deep throws and deep throws are 20 plus air yards in 2020 so last year Ryan Tannehill was number three with 49 percent accuracy on those deep balls guess where Matt Ryan was folks number 18 at 39 percent so does Ryan Tannehill have the bigger arm than Matt Ryan the stats are kind of saying so so it kind of seems like both teams got what they, or both kind of parties got what they wanted. And that's really what we were kind of rooting for in the end. We didn't want to see Julio Jones get kind of just tossed aside and Arthur Blank just be like, all right, thanks for your service. Now we kick you to the curb and you go to the Lions or some or the Jaguars. Could you imagine um, if Julio Jones was on those teams? It would, he would probably end up quitting football. He'd be like, I'm not playing for Dan Campbell and Tim Tebow. That's not happening. I'm out. I'm retiring. So, um, you know. Julio Jones goes to a good, strong-armed quarterback in Ryan Tannehill that's got talent, that's going to be playoff contenders, and, uh, you know, the Falcons, they got a second-round pick. Offloaded that kind of heavy $15 million contract that uh, Julio Jones has, so... It truly seems like Arthur Blank did Julio Jones justice by trading him to the Titans. And for that, we can definitely respect the heck out of that move. We know at the end of the day, it is a business and you don't have to kind of do right by your star players, your franchise players, your Hall of Fame players, your face of the franchise players. You don't have to do right by them. But it's always great to see that, you know. You know, we always root for that. We always root for both parties winning. Um, you know, it gets the media fired up. It gets social media fired up when, you know, you just get cast aside. So for that, Arthur Blank, very well done. And we commend him for that. Fantastic. Alrighty, Julio Jones is already in Tennessee, baby. He's ready to work. Landing earlier this morning in a jet. Yes, yeah, sir. Look at this man ready to work. Is he happy? We got any smiles? Seems all business. He, uh, he, uh, little handshake there by a Titans personnel. And uh, they're off. So he's already there in Tennessee. We got mandatory minicaps coming up this week for a lot of these teams. So, you know, Julio Jones wanting to get that work in. Uh, he hasn't been, he hasn't really kind of had pra team practice. He didn't go to the OTAs with Atlanta because why would you? He knew he was being traded. So, really ready to finally get that on-field work in with his new team, learn the playbook, learn the chemistry, learn the head coaches, learn where he's going to fit in, and let's have this Titans offense ready to rock. You know, we're about 95, 95 days out for the NFL season, so Julio Jones is ready to work. We already saw him kind of working with Derrick Henry, so he already kind of already has that kind of foot in the door of chemistry with his new team. So, the seamless transition from Atlanta to Tennessee shouldn't be that, you know, big. Shouldn't be that kind of long in like a long process. It really should kind of fit in relatively early. He's an all pro. He's a Hall of Famer. He's done this before. He's ready to rock. So Julio Jones already in Tennessee. And I know their fans are loving it. Alrighty, folks, we're going on to this, folks. Still talking about Julio Jones, but now we get an actual kind of breakdown, and that's what we wanted. We knew, you know, after the trade, we were like, all right, but what about some of these other stories that were coming out, and why were the Patriots the favorites the entire time? The entire time, the opening odds had Atlanta at minus 150 of keeping them, and then after that, it was just Patriots at plus 400, plus 450, always the favorites. So we have a little bit more insider information here and hey you know uh, you know we're kind of you know emerging we're trying to make our presence known in the sports commentary world it's very crowded we know this but hey whenever we get validated whenever we get vindicated we gotta point it out baby so here we go notes on julio jones market according to Albert Breer. All righty, so let's talk about some of these scenarios. Baltimore, the Ravens, they talked to Atlanta before the draft, but went out after taking Bateman, that wide receiver. So they're like, all right, that's what you want. You want a first-round pick? Well, we're just going to use our first round on a wide receiver. So, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, 
Baltimore was out kind of instantly. And then this. This is what we are talking about. The New England Patriots and the Las Vegas Raiders never showed real interest. Never showed real interest. And they were the favorites up front, folks. And we never bought that narrative. We never thought it was the right place. The Patriots really spent all their money um, in the offseason before the draft, shoring up their weapons every Everywhere. Bill Belichick never overpays for a top tier wide receiver. He didn't do it with Tom Brady. He's definitely not going to be doing it, doing it with Cam Newton. And Cam Newton doesn't even have that big arm. So we never bought that narrative. They were the favorites of betting. Plus 400 the entire time. Always had the best odds. But they never showed real interest. So I'm glad that we never fell for that. And hopefully we steered you all away from that. If you if you bet this, hopefully you know our words, our words of advice, our words of wisdom, our kind of hammering it down every show, kind of avoided you uh, betting that you know that he was going to New England. So I absolutely love that. All four NFC West teams talked to Atlanta, but none made an official offer. So um, the Rams, the Card, no, nope, not the Cardinals, the Rams the 49ers, the Seahawks, and the, yeah, Arizona Cardinals. Is that the last one in the NFC West? Why am I blanking on the NFC West? Yeah, Cardinals. It is the Cardinals. That's what I thought. All right, so all four of those teams had interest, but nobody made an official offer. We were kind of buying the Rams for a little bit. I wonder why that kind of spike in odds and betting went up. I would love to have more information on that because maybe they just were interested and then they heard, oh, first round pick. They're like, no, 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 no we're not. <laughs> Hang up the phone. We're not giving you a first round for a 33-year-old wide receiver that's coming off of, you know, ha hamstring injuries, you know, nagging hamstring injuries. We're not going to do that. So, And then Tennessee taking on Julio's contract was the key. They kind of, you know, had the money to do it. It. We know this period of time. You can kind of, you know, split the contracts between this season 2021 and next season 2022. And we know the Titans had decent money available, not a lot, but decent money available to take on that contract. So, um, you know, it didn't seem like anybody was really interested in Julio Jones. And, you know, once again, you know, since we have, you know, the final outcome, we can go back on everything and kind of look at it. Him working out with Derrick Henry in the gym, that was kind of, you know, the, the main, that should have been the main focal point. Uh, that really should have put the Tennessee Titans as kind of favorites there, getting that actual video of him working out with somebody on the Titans, getting that work in. So, uh, you know, that kind of showed us right there, and I believe that came out on like May 24th, May 23rd, I think. Um, and then kind of, you know, when he wasn't traded after June 1st, that June 2nd date, after that date, that really also told us that he's not a first round pick. Nobody's giving you a first round pick. We talked about, you know, that the Falcons were having conversations before June 1st. They didn't have to wait till June 1st to start having discussions. So when he wasn't traded instantly, both teams, Atlanta, wanted to free up that money to start kind of, you know, shopping around and start bringing in these other free agents to shore up their team. Um, you know, people wanting or teams wanting to kind of get uh, Julio Jones on their team right now as soon as possible so we can make it, you know, potentially to the OTAs if they made it, uh, but definitely by these mandatory mini camps coming up so timing was also really everything when he wasn't traded that kind of instant of June 2nd we know we knew that there was no real kind of market of a first round pick being traded for Julio Jones a couple of days went by we just got it yesterday mandatory mini camp starting kind of really on Tuesday for a lot of teams so make the thing happen Sunday him going getting to the team on Monday having that kind of full day to get prepped for the mandatory mandatory mini camps that are starting this week so the timing and kind of the initial videos really just kind of told the entire story and now that we have everything we have the 2020 vision we can kind of go back and really kind of see oh yeah titans were kind of the real team and we knew that they weren't going to get a first round pick for that so um yeah that's kind of where we're at with julio jones and everything we got a couple more stories to talk about <clears throat> but um yeah new england was never interested the raiders were never interested baltimore really weren't real contenders um because they went out and got that wide receiver in the draft the nfc west was like all right 
yeah, we're not taking on that contract, and we're also not giving you a first-round pick. And then the Titans really seemed like the only team that was willing to take on that contract and give up a second-round pick to acquire Julio Jones. So Tennessee Titans, man, ended at plus 800 odds. You could have made – that's great, folks. That's great. <laughs> plus 800. That's kind of a surefire plus 800 as well. You never really see that too much. So um, if you made money on it, congratulations, and you could have made a lot of money. 100 bucks wins 800. You can do the math up from there. Alrighty, but once again, another kind of thing that maybe hindered this trade, Julio Jones had, quote, no clue he was on TV when he made the comments that led to his trade request becoming public. Remember, we never really thought that Julio Jones was officially up for sale or officially requested a trade. Shannon Sharp calls him on Undisputed Live. Julio Jones didn't know he was on TV being kind of recorded and listened to live as he was talking to Shannon Sharp. And we heard, you know, Julio Jones say himself, you know I'm out of here. So, you know, him saying that and then the news comes out that, yeah, he actually requested a trade kind of, you know, a couple months ago. And it was kind of hush-hush and I wonder how how much him actually saying that and confirming that really kind of hindered his actual trade kind of um his trade value um all these teams you know officially hearing oh he's up for trade and he doesn't want to be there anymore oh okay all right so you know the falcons kind of backs against the wall we're not going to give you a first round pick for that no way no way we know he doesn't want to be there he's unhappy so yeah you might kind of keep him for this year but next year can he opt out of his contract is he you know is he done with his contract next year so we can just wait you out go ahead and eat that 15 million dollar cap hit and we'll be here next year you know waiting for it again so you know we're in no rush so I wonder how you know that truly impacted his overall trade value could the Falcons gotten that first round pick if Shannon Sharp never called them on undisputed maybe maybe not but we'll never know so once again just kind of this entire Julio Jones saga now that we know the final result and we're starting to get kind of these drips of information of what was actually going on behind the scenes it's fantastic that we can kind of start connecting the dots back to what we've already been talking about so Julio Jones had no clue um, he was live on Undisputed, and now you know everybody, as soon as they see Shannon Sharp calling, you know they're just hitting ignore, or going to voice memo, or voice message, or be like, oh, it's it's uh, it's 9 a.m., where's that on the West Coast, where's that on the East Coast, oh, oh, he's live, the show, no, 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 decline, 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 you're not getting me, you got Julio Jones, you're not gonna get me this time, so Shannon Sharp, he's probably gonna get a lot more kind of decline calls now, because because of this uh, Julio Jones thing. <laughs>